Foxborough, Mass. Scott Zalak was joking around with a video crew at Gillette Stadium one morning last week when Bill Belichick walked in. Immediately, they snapped to their posts, and work began on the weekly video program for the Patriots website. In the show, Belichick, the team's frequently doer coach, cheerfully takes questions from Zalak and the two break down recent plays using a device they call the belly straighter. The program can be fascinating, mostly for the insight into the mind of a football genius like Belly Chick, but also because he has chosen to share them with Zalak, a perpetually gregarious, willfully goofy former backup quarterback who started only seven games in seven seasons with the Patriots. On this day, Belly Chick and Zalak examined plays from the Patriots' AFC Championship game victory over the Jacksonville Jaguars, a win that sent the Patriots to their eighth Super Bowl under Belichick. On the surface, Belichick's weekly date with Zalak is an odd pairing. The understated and sometimes gruff Belichick is widely considered the smartest person ever to lay eyes on a strip of game film. Zalak is best known for his rollicking sense of humor, his loyalty to his old team and his passionate radio calls. Those calls can border on stream of consciousness poetry, like the time Zalak famously blurted out, after a game-winning touchdown pass by Tom Brady, Unicorns. Show ponies. Where's the beef? During this year's AFC Championship game, his analysis of one play was simply, in your face. When Brady threw the winning touchdown pass to Danny Amendola in that game, Zalak's contribution was simply to exhale and sigh, I love Tom Brady. In an organization that urges employees to say nothing, Zalak is liable to say anything, and Patriots fans love it. Zalak's defense of the realm intensity and body, High-energy personality make him extremely popular in New England, even though he threw only 248 passes in his eight-season NFL career. But when the Patriots play the Philadelphia Eagles in the Super Bowl on Sunday, many in this region will mute their televisions and instead listen to Zoe, as Zalak is known locally, and his partner, Bob Sochi, give their interpretation of the game on 98.5 The Sports Hub He's One of Us, said Paul Kenny, a 57-year-old landscaper from Dedham, Massachusetts, and like the fans, Zalak fervently wants the Patriots to win. At halftime of the AFC Championship game, he got into an argument at the press box clam chowder urn with Tony Baselli a former NFL offensive lineman and Zalak's friendly rival on the Jaguars radio broadcasts. Baseli had the temerity to claim the referees favored the Pats. Worse, according to Zalak, Baseli had brushed off a dangerous illegal hit on tight end Rob Gronkowski, a Zalak favorite. On the post-game show, Zalak needled Baseli, wishing him a happy trip back to Jacksonville. Roughly the same size as the 6'6", 28-year-old Gronkowski, Zoe was Gronk long before Gronkowski ever guzzled from a beer bong. Belichick was asked during a break in the taping of his show What Zalak, now 50, was like at that age. Belichick paused, smiled, and said diplomatically, We've all matured. But while Zalak may sound like an over-the-top homer to a Patriots hater, his commentary is mostly fair and often instructive. That might explain why Belichick respects and trusts him enough to collaborate. The two men met in 1996, when Belichick joined the Patriots staff as the assistant head coach to Bill Parcells, nominally responsible for the defensive backs. In that pre-dynastic iteration of the Patriots, Zalak was Drew Bledsoe's rowdy backup and the extra hand who ran the scout team for Belichick's defensive backs, 
impersonating the opposing quarterback in practices I worked closer with him at that time than I did with Drew, Belichick said during a break in the taping of the show. He was great at it. He knew the game, he's smart and he always had a great sense of humor. Everyone got along with him, plus he could throw the hell out of the ball. From the other side, Zalak witnessed Balakik's mind-boggling attention to detail if we were playing the Dolphins, I had to wear number 13 just like Dan Marino, Zalak said. I had to have the sleeves cut off like Dan and wear the same face mask. Bill told me where Marino put his hands at his belt. He wanted the exact same mannerisms. Before a game against the Broncos that year, Belichick admonished Zalak for failing to accurately capture John Elway's cadence at the line of scrimmage. No, no, it said Hutt, Belichick instructed. To the coach, even something as microscopic as emphasizing the proper syllable in a scout team drill was worth doing correctly. Belichick is a teacher at heart and his sessions with Zalak on the belly straighter are a chance to educate the public about the finer aspects of a complex game. The idea was originally Balakik's, and he takes time each week to find a handful of plays that are illustrative yet don't reveal state secrets or expose a player to criticism. Zalak started doing the belly chick breakdowns nine years ago, at first filling in when Belichick needed a new host for the video program. Zalak admits that, as a player, he sometimes had to fight the temptation to doze off during film sessions. And despite his decidedly unbelakikian radio personality, Zalak likes to sing ADS pop tunes at full volume and yell sup. To his devoted listeners, he is far more savvy than his partying jock persona suggests. That makes him the perfect foil for Belly Chick, at least according to Matt Smith, the senior executive producer of their show after that first session with Scott, Bill took me aside and said, this is going to work out really well, Smith recalled. He said, I'm just telling you, it's going to be really good. Like Belly Kick's father, Steve who coached at the United States Naval Academy, Zalak's father, Paul, was a coach at Ringgold High School near Pittsburgh, where he once coached a teenage Joe Montana. Scott Zalak idolized Montana, but now argues that Brady is the best quarterback ever and adds, it's not even close. But even with that deep football background, his own playing career and his later one as a broadcaster, Zalak said he still learned new things from Belichick. In 2015, a few days after the Patriots beat the Seahawks in Super Bowl 49, the team was preparing to board buses for its championship parade in Boston when Belichick asked Zalak to join him for an off air film session. Belichick had heard that during the game, which the Patriots won on Malcolm Butler's goal line interception, Zalak had lambasted the Seattle coaching staff on the air. Zalak had labeled the decision to throw the ball instead of handing it to the bruising running back Marshawn Lynch the worst play call in Super Bowl history. Belichick explained to Zalak why it was not. He showed Zalak a play earlier in the game where the Patriots had used the same defensive package, and stuffed Lynch for a loss. When the Seahawks saw that personnel grouping on the field at the end of the game, passing the ball made sense he wanted me to know as a broadcaster why it wasn't the worst call in the history of the Super Bowl, Zalak said. He wanted me to learn. Educating Zalak also means informing the public. Zalak will be more knowledgeable not only for game broadcasts, but also on his daily sports radio show, Zalak and Bertrand, an amusing four-hour symposium with his co-host Mark Bertrand and the producer Jim Louth. On the show, 
they discuss everything from sports to pop music to shark research, Zalak's least favorite subject, and Zalak shines as the archetype of the guy people want to chug beer, s, with before one of the Super Bowls in Arizona, we were in a sushi restaurant, Louth recalled one day last week. Half the Patriots coaching staff was in there, and so was Manny Ramirez. This was when the Red Sox were really good. But the fans who came in were chanting, Zo, Zo, Zo. I was looking around thinking, what is going on here? Decades ago, when Parcells coached the Patriots, he quipped that the outsized Zalak needed to understand the difference between being a quarterback and being the Zo. But if being the Zo hindered him as a player, it has only enhanced his post-playing career. Faithful listeners adore Zalak's bombast, his everyman outlook and his playing day yarns of locker room fights and berry weekends. But when he discusses the current Patriots, there is a collective lean in toward the radio, because fans know Zalak has access to Belichick. But talking about the Patriots for four hours a day requires Zalak to strike a critical balance, and he is keenly aware how closely Belichick scrutinizes the flow of information out of Gillette Stadium. I have to be careful, Zalak said. I'm on the plane. I'm in the back rooms. I see stuff. I talk to people. But I know the line and I don't cross it. I think Bill respects I have a job to do. And we address controversies, too. We know what drives people to listen. Zalak also knows that at least some of his popularity is a result of the Patriots' unprecedented success. Without the Patriots being so good and driving up interest, the legend of Zoe might not be so big yet, big, Zalak said smiling. Big is a good word.